Hi guys and welcome to Marvelous Madame Channel 2. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much if you have shown up here. That means that you have either already subscribed or you are with me tonight um, by way of my first channel. Um, my main channel. Um, so again, thank you so much uh, for joining me. Um, just to give you a little background, um, when I started Readings by Marvelous Madame a little over two years ago, guys, I did full moon and new moon affirmation um, videos. I did readings based upon the energy of the full moon. Um, and what I found was is that there's a very niche astrology, um, like an astrology interest or astrology enthusiast and astrology is a huge part of my life so just to give you a little background on that that's the purpose of this this channel was not created to uh, finesse anybody into believing that I know what I'm talking about as I learn I teach and I do believe um, in doing that I've always been interested and now I have taken my interest to the next level I will be launching um, this and turning it into a full-blown full astrology channel, giving people that trust me, um, you know, an opportunity to break things down in a very clear, concise, practical way so it's easy to memorize. And more importantly, my perspective, because I think we all have something to say. So that's just a little history um, on this particular channel. So if you're, you know, here with me for the first time, that's what this is about. If you have subscribed to both of my channels and you are an avid listener slash watcher, I appreciate you immensely. Thank you so much for your support. I'm going to give you a brief layout, okay, of how this video is going to be structured um, and how they're going to be structured going forward. But before I do that, um, I want to let you know that my, um, as I'm restructuring this channel going forward, as I explained in the last three videos that I have dropped for you guys, trying to get back into my, my mode is I want you guys to know that each one of them is going to be structured a little bit different. So going forward, since this is my first full moon video in uh, the channel's restructuring, so to speak, we're going to start out with the full moon, what that particular full moon means and give you a little information on that and a little bit about what's going on in the sky really briefly. We're going to then go into the horoscopes for each one of the um, zodiac signs not um, full-blown horoscopes, just a full moon and Pisces horoscope. And we're going to finally close the video with an affirmation, okay? Um, and when I get to the affirmation portion, I will explain a little bit about um, what to do with that affirmation, okay? Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. Of course, today is uh, Wednesday, September 2nd, 2020. This is a full moon in Pisces, okay? That particular um, full moon happened actually 10.22 p.m. Pacific time, 10 degrees of Pisces, okay, on September the 1st. So for some of us, we woke up to it. Well, I guess all of us woke up to it, depending on where you are. Pisces full moon um, has the greatest sensitivity and perceptiveness of surroundings. OK, you can experience feeling insecurity, be passive and only wait and see what happens in your life. If you engage in creative or spiritual searches, you will benefit from the greatness of the imagination of the Pisces. OK. Things are seldom what they seem. But this is especially true under this Pisces full moon. The mystical messages coming through now have a dreamy logic all their own. Okay. 
And we'll need to be more than just logic to fully fathom the depths of these unconscious knowings. But if we get into deep, this full moon sextile with Uranus and Taurus can, Taurus can be a vital lifeline. Uranus has a way of snapping us back to the here and now, okay? Which, as, as any true mystic will tell you, is the only reality there is. And of Earth, uh, a lot of the earth signs will tell you the same thing. Uranus um, rules um, Aquarius. Um, so the Aquarius ruler will tell you that. <laughs> Trust me, the planet of wake up, shake ups, and, and in some cases, breakups. Through imagination and intuition and empathy, the Pisces moon allows us to experience it more fully. At the same time, guys, critical and analytical thinking skills are equally essential. With so much information flooding in through both our physical and subtle senses, there's a lot to process. Fortunately, the Virgo's sun, sun's trine with Uranus will help us all make sense. So it's like we get a whooping and then, you know, we get like these foggy thoughts. We get snapped back into reality. But then in the fog, we do have um, the analytical um, influence of the sun and Virgo that will trine with Uranus um, and help us a little bit. Okay. With discernment, we can sort out which information is truly useful and which only serves to confuse us more. And before I get to the next section, I just want to let you know, um, there's been a flood of emotions for me, extremely um, highs and lows right now. Um, anybody that has a earth moon um, that has some water, you're steaming, okay? Um, it can be uncomfortable for those detaching signs. So all of us will experience it a little bit different. The tender moons, like this particular moon, is a little bit um, uncomfortable for me for the standpoint of it hits my water. But at the same time, um, that Uranus and Taurus also hits in um, the relationship sector in my chart as well. So it's going to hit each person different. Um, there's so many different flavors of who of what makes us who we are guys so it's really one of those things so if you have your birth chart go ahead and take the time to figure out where um, Uranus is and if you want to know what's going on and a blow by blow um, of all of the technical um, important astrological aspects that video is already dropped for you so you can kind of listen to the dates and kind of go in and find out what's happening when all right so what does the september full moon in pisces mean well at this full moon the trick is staying fully present both in our bodies and what's happening around us with uranus retrograde which is what we're in right now uranus went retrograde on 8 15 and i do not have a video for that but it's coming we're internalizing more of its electrifying energy, but having some simple mind, body, spirit practices in our repertoire makes it easier to ground and center ourselves. A cardinal grand cross can also set us on edge in this full moon. While cardinal is the energy of decisive action, right now competing agendas and impulses are pulling us in four different directions. And that's what that grand cross is. The best way to relieve this tension, guys, is by standing in the middle ground between all of these extremes. For example, Venus is in Cancer. It's our love of home, family, and all that makes us feel safe and secure. Meanwhile, retrograde Saturn in Capricorn pushes us to develop self-discipline and mastery. Okay, so there are the two that are the exact opposite. And guys, if you understand and have been listening to what is in my chart, this grand cross and um, grand cardinal cross is all marvelous, madame. It's all Marv. It is like all me. So if you guys have these and you are experiencing what I am experiencing and I still am trying to bring the energy to you. On the other hand, Mars and Aries doesn't do delayed gratifications and that energy is all about the now. And then we have Juno and Libra that reminds us that 
we're not the only ones affected by our actions. So that is the Cardinal Grand Cross, okay? And if you want to know what the uh, uh, Cardinal Grand Cross is, that glossary will be below. Um, and I believe that is it. If you want to know what Juno is, I will also uh, give you a definition for that. If any planet can clarify this conflict, it's Mercury and Virgo. Okay, so that again is that analytical um, do-gooder type of Virgo energy in Mercury, the planet of communication, of course, um, that rules the third house. And that right now, until it retros, because it doesn't start its shadow yet, will be helping us a little bit, okay? And all around this full moon, his trines with Pluto and Saturn, both retrograde and Capricorn, which won't go direct until the end of the month, will help us cut through the confusion to see what is really going on. But there is no reason to take things on blind faith. After all, guys, the Pisces full moon is amplifying everyone's intuition. There is a strong chance that your dreams, vision, and gut feelings are telling you the truth. But there is only one, but there, but the, I'm sorry, the only way to know for sure is to put them to the test, okay? So, I hope that made sense for you guys. Um, let's get into um, the horoscopes for the September full moon in Pisces. We're going to start off with Aries. Your horoscope is, um, there's an explanation for everything, Aries, at least you thought there was. But there are some experiences that you just can't wrap your head around. And lately, you seem to be having more of them. Enlightenment can come to you in expected ways, but reality may never look the same again. So, Aries, there's going to be extreme changes for you. We're going to move on to Taurus. Your vibe attracts your tribe, Taurus. So if you want to surround yourself with up more uplifting and inspiring people, you'll have to become one yourself. This full moon is raising your consciousness and your frequency. But be selective about what thoughts deserve your precious energy and attention, okay? Watch your thoughts, Taurus. Thoughts become reality. Gemini. It's more than a career, Gemini. It's a calling. Still idealizing or romanticizing your work too much does you a great disservice. It obscures how, you, how hard you work and the real sacrifices you're often asked to make. At this full moon, try not, try not to put too much pressure on yourself, okay? And a lot of these horoscopes, guys, go back to where it's hitting you in your house. There's already a video for that. So these should match directly what is coming full circle in this full moon. What needs to be ended, acknowledged, and released in full moons, which I'm going to get into before I start the affirmations. I just want to let you guys know that if you're interested in that, please watch the forward focus. Okay, let's move on to cancer. Belief systems should lift us up, cancer, not weigh us down. And the surest way to tell that you're on the right path is when your heart and mind are open and not closing. At this full moon in Pisces, your own philosophy is being put to the test. What truly resonates with you? Beautiful. Leo. Influence is a subtle thing, Leo. You may not consider yourself a power player, but you hold more sway than you think. At this full moon in Pisces, your main concern is figuring out what to do with it. Whatever power you have, use it consciously and responsibly. Virgo, you just don't see people as they are, Virgo. You see them as they could be. This is a beautiful Virgo, okay, in your season. And while this inspires and motivates your loved ones to become their best selves, it can also be a lot of pressure. This full moon in Pisces reveals a need to just adjust your expectations. And Virgo, let me just make a small um, um, correlation there. That has been coming up in your readings a lot, okay, in your tarot readings. So if you're here and you're listening to that, please, I task you with going back and watching the videos for the last two weeks when the sun moved into Virgo on the 22nd. Um, because when your season started, 
um, Mars, I'm sorry, Uranus was already in retro. And when that Uranus went into retrograde, um, your energy on the channel started to shift your collective energy. And I do believe that it is a lot of pressure that's being put. Um, and as it pertains to the very last video that I did for you guys, I specifically remember your video and I believe I titled it something along the lines of um, health issues and uh, financial strain or something has called a rift between you has caused a rift between you two. Um, go and watch that video, Virgo, and just look at it from your person's perspective a little bit. OK, we move on to Libra. There is no need to be a purist about your spiritual practices, Libra. A little mindfulness goes a long way. At this full moon in Pisces, even the most mundane and repetitive tasks can take on a meditative quality. Just make sure you're not using them to avoid more pressing issues, okay? We move on to Scorpio. Scorpio, we humans are born to be creative, but there's also but we're also social animals, which is easy to forget when you're down the creative rabbit hole. This full moon in Pisces is reminding you to reconnect with the people that inspire you. Unlikely muses can appear at this time and get your juices flowing again, okay? Sagittarius. It doesn't it doesn't have to be perfect, Sag. It just has to be done. That's very important for you right now, by the way. Still, anything less than your maximum effort seems suspiciously like phonying in on it, okay? Phony it. F phoning it in. <laughs> At this full moon in Pisces, though, you're advised to go a little easier on yourself cut the distractions and just focus on the essentials said if i'm not mistaken your forward focus for virgo season hits you in your 10th house of career um and that makes sense so it doesn't need to be perfect it just needs to get done okay and if you're not putting your ma maximum effort in then it's like what is the the use what's the point so when you cut down on the distractions and just focus on the essentials, you'll be a rock star. OK, Capricorn. There are some things you just know, Capricorn, even if you can't explain how you know them. This is so true. But at this full moon in Pisces, that may not feel like enough. If you're struggling to put wisdom into words, the right gesture or metaphor can appear just when you need it. Capricorns, me a Capricorn moon and all of my Capricorn collective, we have gotten beat up 35 ways from Sunday, okay? There is a lot pressing us and pressing us and pressing us, but I promise you, um, just like I talked about in yesterday's Astro Snip, we are about to get a little bit of reprieve, so please, um, listen to what I have to say about what we've been going through. Um, it's been reflective in your tarot readings as well. I know that the collective readings for love have been very, very hard, but I'm telling you Capricorn, you will survive. Okay. And if you feel like you need to speak with me one-on-one, -on -one, please do. I know a lot of my Capricorns have come out and I'm probably booked completely because of you guys so i love you um caps um let's hang in there okay aquarius gifts should not come with strings attached still it's only natural to expect a little gratitude in return for the gifts you give at this full moon in pisces it may not that may not be totally realistic you're in you your um intuitive nature is telling you what people need but they might not be ready or willing to receive it okay keep that in mind aquarius um there are some things that you have been going through as well and your ruler is retrograde so i did spend a little time talking to you as well okay um please go and check out um the those videos they are posted for you and finally pisces 
in your full moon, your vision may be 2020, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're seeing yourself clearly. Comparing yourself to others either positively or negatively is a deceptively easy trap. At this full moon in your sign, nipping unhelpful self-talk in the bud is an important for first step toward radical self-acceptance. Pisces. I want you guys to really understand that um, first and foremost, your communication, my beautiful fish, is in detriment. If the full moon is here, you're being lit up and you're probably a bundle of emotions. There are some things that you need to get off your chest and you have a harder time understanding the way people look at you. You're being guided to understand that you're not necessarily seeing yourself clearly, okay? So please understand that you can't compare yourself to others. You have to do your own thing right now, all right? Um, guys, these expert excerpts were taken from astrology.com. Um, just wanted to let you know. Now, let's go into the affirmations, which is the best part of this. What I would like for you guys to do is decide what full moon ritual works for you. I did teach a class on the new moon and the full moon and what to do. New moon set intentions. Full moon, simply put, is to release what no longer serves you. Um, but I want for those of you who don't have time, don't like to write, um, don't believe in rituals, whatever your situation is, there's always an affirmation and this serves just as much. If you want to start to do affirmations, um, this is like, again, a good place to start. But I would find a quiet space, bring yourself to a calm state, get yourself some paper. And what you want to do is you want to write down everything that no longer serves you. Things that need, need to be ended, acknowledged, adjusted, okay? And once you have compiled this, and I'm sorry for the noise, I'm looking for the, oh, here we go, sorry. Once you have compiled all of that, okay? Get yourself, guys, into a state where you are ready to um, do the next step, which is to burn it, okay? I have seen many rituals where people do different things. Some people take it and bury it. Some people burn it. That's my preferred method. Some people tear it up in a, a million little pieces. Some people put it in a shredder. The significance of destroying it once it's done is, and is for this purpose alone. Whatever you write in that petition is what I call it. Once you destroy it, bury it, shred it, tear it up into a million pieces or burn it. When you wake up the next morning, it's done. Okay. So I'll tell you what I do and you can decide and you can Google or watch plenty of YouTube videos on how you want to do that. I take a piece of paper and I write the following. I demand that all bodies, programs, implants, thoughts, frequencies, vibrations, and patterns that are enabling and anchoring the energy that I am intending to release to leave me and my energy through all space and time and dimension on every le level layer, I'm sorry, of my existence. You have no place here. I declare all things to be so and in alignment with my greatest and higher good, so it is. It is called the full moon clause. That full moon clause goes at the end of your petition, okay? What you're gonna write there is all of the things that no longer serve you. What you're gonna write there is things that you wanna let go. What you are going to put on there is how something made you feel how somebody made you feel. Now, I don't have time to spend too much time on this. That's a whole nother video in itself. But there is no wrong or right way. Keep it simple. There is a preferred way, but there is no wrong or right way because you're gonna be going with what you feel, guys. So, 
Keep it simple, but make a declaration to yourself that once you put that clause at the end and you burn that or destroy it, it's done. And you, you may have to do that a couple of more moons. You may have to do it for a whole year until you no longer feel it. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's going to be very hard in the beginning. Okay. So that is what you're going to do. If you want to write down these affirmations that I'm about to share with you, you can, or you can freestyle and write your own. But I would suggest that you put the clause at the end and when you're done, destroy it and vow to yourself that you will not feel those things again. And it's like it never happened. Okay. All right. Now we start with the affirmations for the full moon in Pisces. Okay. I dream magical and sublime dreams. I release that which no longer serves my highest path. I open to the guidance, insights, and assistance from my guides, inner teachers, and angels. I ask to be shown my part in helping and assisting others. I unconditionally love myself and others. I accept with gratitude the many gifts that spirit has bestowed upon me. At this full moon in Pisces, I am releasing all that is not aligned with my greatest and higher good. I am choosing to be free. I am choosing to end karma by forgiving everyone who has wronged me and asking forgiveness of all whom I've wronged in dimensions on all timelines, past, present, and future. I am releasing all beliefs, persons, and situations that attempt to blind me to my wholeness and power in all dimensions on all timelines past present and future i am releasing all that distracts me from my life's purpose has planned my soul prior to this incarnation i willingly let go of all that no longer serves my greatest and highest good in all dimensions on all timelines past present and future I am also releasing all beliefs, persons, and situations that has prevented me from seeing the array of abundance and opportunities that has continuously flowed to me. I am ready to receive it now and allow all I desire to come to me. I accept control of the circumstances of my life at the same time surrendering to your divine will. I gratefully receive and accept your guidance there is nothing that can prevent me from moving forward i claim my sovereignty i am free and so it is amen okay absolutely beautiful okay absolutely beautiful so guys there we have it you can certainly Take those affirmations and make them very, very plain, just like that. I don't, I guess plain was the wrong word, maybe general. It's very specific, but very general at the same time, or you can get very specific, okay? But I think these affirmations cover it. And again, you can write these affirmations down, just as I said, and put the clause at the end, which I've already told you about. And at that point, you can go ahead and set it ablaze. It is meant to be destroyed. Um, when I teach the full moon, that's how I teach it. But if you um, want to go out and find another way to do that, you certainly can find other ways to get rid of things that no longer serve you. The most important thing, guys, about this is just being consistent. When those feelings come back up, which they will, then it is necessary for you to do something different with that different energy. And what I hope to bring is a new set of affirmations every single moon and it will also keep me um present because i do this religiously for myself but um, it got to the point where the ritual was um, interrupted by my recording schedule and that's not an excuse right so there's this this there's this this um backdated build up um because i have not been using the energy the way that i want so um, it has been very hard to stay pure and whole 
with all of this terrible energy and what's going on in the world. So um, my commitment to you guys is to help whoever wants to learn and to also get myself back on track. So with that, thank you so much. Um, I appreciate you guys for being here and listening. I hope that helped. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. The next video I am planning is to talk about the um, already Uranus and retrograde. And then the final thing this month will be um, the Mars retrograde that's going to take place on the 9th. So um, look out for both of those videos within the next week or so. And then um, if you're interested in any type of um, energy that's going to take place when these planets go direct at the end of the um, this month. I did talk about that in the Astro Snip and I call it a conversation because I'm basically talking to you guys about the most ast uh, important astrological aspects. Um, so if you're interested in that, all of these videos tie in together in some kind of way. It just depends on what you want to hear, but it's all out there for you. Okay. Thank you guys so much. And I will see you soon. I appreciate you immensely. And thank you again for all of your love and support. Bye, guys.